Hello Vinyl Community, this is Randy. Tonight I'm going to rank the Birds albums. All 11 Birds albums. I'm leaving out number 12, the Arista album where Roger McGuinn got back together, I think, with uh, David Crosby and Chris Hillman. I'm not going to rank that one, but I am going to rank the first 11. I've noticed in the Vinyl Community lately a couple of people showing uh, the Birds Greatest Hits album. So I figured I would. Uh, Try ranking this album, these albums for you. So uh, before I start ranking them, I'm going to uh, tell you what they all are. Uh, so the first one, Mr. Tambourine Man, released in June of 1965. The band members at this time were Mike Clark on drums, David Crosby vocals and guitar, Gene Clark on vocals, uh, Chris Hillman on bass, and Jim McGuinn on vocals and guitar. Uh, the big hit off of this album, of course, is Mr. Tambourine Man. The next album is Turn, 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 released in December 1965 with exactly the same band members. No change. The next album, Fifth Dimension, July of 1966. Gene Clark has left the band by this point. He, uh, were, they were evidently uh, touring, and he did not like flying. Um, I read somewhere that he had seen a, a plane crash when he was very young, uh, and he did not like flying. And I guess he was on a plane, and he just said that he couldn't fly. He had to get off. And uh, uh, I guess Jim McGuinn told him, if, if you can't fly, you can't be a bird. So, uh, so he was out uh, the band at this point. The next album, uh, Fifth Dimension, sorry, Younger Than Yesterday, uh, in uh, February 1967. So, from June of 65 to February of 67, they released four albums. This album has a psychedelic back cover there. The next album that was released was uh, Columbia decided to release a Greatest Hits album. This is the one that I've seen people showing lately in the VC. It's a great album, even though I have all the other albums. I, I listen to this one sometimes because I like other hit songs and I really have not grown tired of any of them. Uh, after that, Oh, yeah, sorry. After that was Notorious Bird Brothers in January of 1968. So there were more changes by this time. Uh, Mike Clark was out as the drummer. He was replaced by Kevin Kelly. David Crosby was out. Uh, he wasn't replaced by anyone. He was simply asked to leave uh, by, uh, by uh, uh, Roger McGuinn and Chris Hillman. Uh, J J he had been known as Jim McGuinn up through the first four albums, and then I guess he had, uh, uh, due to his uh, religion, he changed his name to Roger McGuinn, starting with Notorious Bird Brothers. So there's essentially three band members on this album, even though there are some David Crosby songs, and they really are some of his best songs, Draft Morning, Dolphin Smile, but he is no longer officially a member of the band at that point. Next album... Sweetheart of the Rodeo in uh, August of 1968. They uh, were, found it didn't work well, it's just a trio, so they added Graham Parsons. Uh, he sang uh, three songs on this album, You're Still On My Mind, Life in Prison, and Hickory Wind. Originally, when they recorded it, uh, his vocals had also been on um, the Christian Life, and 100 Years From Now, uh, his vocals were removed and uh, Roger McGuinn replaced his vocals on that. I read two different things. One, one uh, thing said that his vocals were replaced because there were some legal issues. Uh, Lee Hazelwood had signed Graham Parsons, I guess, to a contract and they were, there were some problems with that, but uh, then also it sounds like maybe the Bird's management didn't want to have six of the songs in this album sung by, I guess, the new guy. So, anyway, that was what happened with that. They uh, 
toured and um, uh, uh, were in England. I guess Graham Parsons decided to stay in England with uh, Mick and Keith and uh, uh, the birds uh, toured on without him. So he was out after that one album. The next album, Dr. Birds and Mr. Hyde. This one is released in March of 1969. It's basically a whole new band at this point. Uh, they've added Clarence White on guitar, Gene Parsons on drums, and John York on bass. So Roger McGuinn is the only original member at this point. Uh, after that, someone who was involved in their management released um, the Birds' pre-flight sessions, which were some very early recordings. I don't think this is exactly the album. This is one that came out just a few years ago, I think, on Sundays. This is a two-record set. Uh, I'm not really sure what that original album looked like, but this is a, a good compilation of some of their early uh, singles and demos. Things like that. I also won't be ranking that one. Uh, the next album, Ballad of Easy Rider, November of 1969. This, uh, they go back to uh, singing Dylan songs here, It's All Over Now, Baby Blue. It's on this one. Uh, the next one is Untitled. As you can see, I, didn't, I bought some of these albums used. Uh, White's. With his name up here. I really, I wish he hadn't done that. Uh, uh, the record really sounds very good. This is a gatefold. This is a two record set. This is uh, sort of an unusual album that the first record is a live concert. Uh, so sides one and two are live, and sides three and four are new studio recordings. Next album after that, untitled, was uh, September of 70. Bird Maniacs, June of 71. Um, this is the same lineup. So, uh, starting with this, oh, I forgot to tell you that uh, the, the lineup changed here too. John York uh, left after Ballad of Easy Rider and Skip Batten took his place as the bass player. So at this point, there are no more lineup changes. The final uh, lineup of the band, Skip Batten on bass, uh, Gene Parsons on drums, uh, Roger McGuinn, and uh, Clarence White on guitar. And they were the band until the end. They were actually the, the longest single incarnation of the band. They were the longest standing band members. Uh, so Bird Maniacs came out in June of 71, and one of the worst album covers ever. It's got a cool gatefold, the inside of it looks good, oh boy, yeah, the outside, I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, with that, their very last album is Farther Along, that's it, so uh, how do I rank these albums? All right, I'm going to start at the end. So remember, these are my. Uh, this is this is how I, this is how my ranking of the records. These are just the ones that I like. I'm not saying that uh, this certainly isn't the the critics' choice or uh, uh, anybody else's choice. These are the ones that I like. So uh, I'm going to start at the end with my least favorite. Work my way up to the favorite. So my least favorite is uh, Sweetheart of the Rodeo. This is just really a, a country album. Uh, it is a seminal album. I think a lot of people maybe would they say this is possibly the Bird's greatest album. I, uh, I just am not a country music fan. This is just pretty much straight country. So I'm not a huge fan of this album. This is definitely my least favorite of all of them. I can still listen to it. I still like it. There are songs on here I like. You Ain't Going Nowhere. Uh, Bob Dylan's song is one of my favorite birds songs. Uh, uh, Hickory Wind is a fantastic song that Graham Parsons sings. 100 Years From Now, Blue Canadian Rockies. It's a, it's a good album. I like other albums, so uh, something has to be number 11. So that is number 
11. Uh, let's see. My number 10 is Bird Maniacs. In addition to having a terrible cover, this album just kind of peters out towards the end. It actually starts out great. Uh, the first three songs, Glory, Glory, Pale Blue, and I Trust, are all three uh, Roger McGuinn songs, and they are all fantastic songs. Uh, but after that, it, it really peters out. It's uh, songs by the other members of the band. There's some instrumentals on here. I like to listen to it because I just like the birds in general. So I can put on any birds album at any time, and I'm happy to listen to it. Uh, but this is sort of pedestrian, uh, kind of run-of-the-mill. So unless you are a, a birds fan, I, I certainly wouldn't suggest starting uh, with that one. Uh, after that, Untitled. I'm basing that uh, entirely just on the uh, studio portion of this album. The live album is great. It starts with Lover of the Bayou, Positively 4th Street, uh, Natural West, So You, so you Want to Be a Rock and Roll Star, Mr. Tambourine Man, and Mr. Spaceman. Side 2 is a 15-minute uh, 8 miles high. I think that's great. Uh, features a lot of uh, uh, guitar interplay between Clarence White and Roger McGuinn, who are both excellent guitarists. Uh, but I'm basing my uh, ranking on the studio album. So uh, it starts with Chestnut Mare, which is a good song. It was a big hit in England. Um, it's got some other songs on it that I like, but uh, once again, kind of like with uh, Bird Maniacs, it's, it's for, a re for the real Birds fans, kind of laid back. I mean, this is, these albums are hippie. These are, <laughs> these are hippie albums. These, these bands were... You know, I would say these were, this band here, this incarnation of the Birds was, uh, you know, one of the first jam bands. They came out and played long songs, like the 15 minute, uh, you know, eight miles high. So, uh, they were laid back, but they, you know, might take a little getting used to. Uh, my next one, uh, this would be number eight, is Farther Along. The very last album, I love that cover. Well, I don't like this cover. This is really bad shape. I've got this album used. Uh, but if I had one in good shape, I'd really like that cover. <coughs> Shows the band members on the back. Uh, I think I mentioned something for the last album about hippies. That's a hairy band right there. Uh, this album has some really good songs on it, though. Tiffany Queen is a fantastic. Starts the album. It's a rock and roll song. Uh, Farther Along is just a, a, a great song with some really good words. Uh, this album also features the last of the Birds uh, Canine songs, the Birds Canine Trilogy. It has uh, Bugler, which is a fantastic song sung by Clarence White about his dog. It, you know, it's maybe a little bit maudlin, but uh, I still like it. I really like it. Yeah, if you're a dog lover, I would highly recommend that one to you. Bugler. Uh, the second side also has some good songs on it. Uh, uh, Antique Sandy, I think, is really fantastic. You know, some of it gets a little bit, you know, they do this version of So Fine, which really is not uh, too good. So, uh, like I said, it's kind of like a, they could have combined the best songs from Bird Maniacs in this one, I think, and had a really good album. Uh, next, for me is going to be, uh, yeah, Turn, 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 the second album. This album uh, has the song Turn, Turn, Turn on it, so of course that's awesome. Uh, it Won't Be Wrong is a great uh, song by, uh, I think that was one of the first ones that uh, Jim McGuinn wrote, actually. Uh, Let's see, Set You Free This Time is a uh, Gene Clark song. Um, yeah, The World Turns All Around Her, If You're Gone. Those are the Gene Clark songs on here. This album also is interesting because Jim McGuinn, on the back of it, is listed as leader and guitar. I've never seen that for any other band where the guy is actually listed as the leader but it was, it was his band I guess he was the leader uh, 
So yeah, this is a uh, good album. Uh, but there's really no hits on here other than uh, Turn, Turn, Turn. So I do like the Gene Clark songs on there. Okay, so that was uh, number seven. Number six is Mr. Tambourine Man. Their very first album. At this point, all these albums are just so great. I mean, you, you just can't go wrong with any of them. Uh, this starts out with Mr. Tambourine Man, then uh, the Gene Clark song, I'll Feel a Whole Lot Better. One of their best songs. Uh, Bob Dylan, Spanish Harlan Incident. Uh, yeah, You Want to Cry. Yeah, what else did uh, uh, Gene Clark, uh, yeah, I'll feel a whole lot better, yeah, Here Without You, I Knew I'd Want You, <clears throat> You Won't Have to Cry, so they wrote with uh, Roger McGuinn, and It's No Use. Uh, Here Without You is one of my favorite bird songs. I uh, wanted to mention there's a fantastic cover version of that song by uh, Chris Damey and Peter Holsapple on their Mavericks album. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so that is Fifth Dimension. No, what am I saying? That's Mr. Tambourine Man. That's number six. Uh, my number five album is Ballad of Easy Rider. Once again, this is that hippie phase of the band. And um, this is really the incarnation I like best. This is John York on bass. This is before Skip Batten came along, but still very much the same vibe here. Uh, Peter Fonda wrote this poem on the back of it. I, uh, uh, Ballad of Easy Rider, I read somewhere that uh, Peter Fonda said that his, uh, the characters in Easy Rider, uh, Captain America and uh, and Billy were uh, based on um, Captain America was the, was Roger McGuinn and uh, and Billy was David Crosby. They were based on them anyway. So uh, Dennis Hopper would be David Crosby and uh, Peter Fonda would be uh, Roger McGuinn. So I guess it, you know loosely based, I suppose. Uh, this album though uh, starts out with Ballad of Easy Rider, which is a fantastic ballad. This has number two in the Dog trilogy, Fido, which is a uh, song by uh, John York about a, a dog, I guess, that came into his hotel room while they were traveling. Uh, also has Oil in My Lamp and Tulsa County, which Tulsa County is a, a country song that I do like a lot. So. Uh, starts out with Jesus is Just Alright on side two. They're back to Bob Dylan with It's All Over Now, Baby Blue. Uh, there Must Be Someone. Gunga Den, Deporti. This is a strong album. This is this is a strong album. This is, it's really good. Uh, highly recommend it to you. Okay. Uh, number four. Fifth Dimension. This album uh, starts out great with 5D, Wild Mountain Time. Mr. Spaceman, I See You, What's Happening, which is a great David Crosby song. My only problem, the only reason this album is not ranked higher is because the last song on side one, I Come and Stand at Every Door, it's a really depressing, downer song about a, a kid who's, I guess, been a victim of war, so uh, I would excise that song. Uh, Eight Miles High opens side two. And then they do Hey Joe after that. Captain Soul, John Riley, and 242 uh, Flax Trot. So, um, this album is, um, the first side's great. The first couple songs of side two, but it's a little bit weak. After that, uh, my third favorite, Younger Than Yesterday. Starts out with, so you want to be a rock and roll star? Have you seen her face? Renaissance fan, time between? Everybody's been burned. It's on here, a David Crosby song. <clears throat> Thoughts and words, Mind Gardens is on here, which is another uh, 
David Crosby song, I believe, and I think it's very cool. Uh, back to Dylan again with My Back Pages. It ends up with uh, The Girl With No Name and Why. Fantastic album. All right, we're closing in now. Number two, Notorious Bird Brothers. This album is uh, on a lot of people's top ten list as an all-time great album, and I would not argue with that at all. Every song on here is great. This album is fantastic from beginning to end. Starts with Artificial Energy. Going back, a, a Carole King song that they did, which evidently was a, a big reason that David Crosby left. He wanted them to do Triad, and they wanted to do Going Back. Uh, so I guess uh, Jefferson Airplane ended up doing Triad, and David Crosby ended up Joining Crosby, Stills, and Nash. I mean, yeah, so. Uh, anyway, Natural Harmony's on here. Uh, Draft Morning, a, a David Crosby uh, song, is really fantastic. Wasn't Born to Follow, Get to You. Uh, <clears throat> on the second side, Changes Now. Uh, old John Robertson, Tribal Gathering. It's a great song. I think he said he wrote that about the human being. Uh, and then Dolphin Smile and Space Odyssey. So. Beginning to end. Great. Great album. My number one favorite Birds album. Dr. Birds and Mr. Hyde. Once again, just fantastic from beginning to end. Starts out great with This Wheel's on Fire. So I guess that was a, a Dylan song that was co written, I guess, with someone from uh, the band. After that, uh, Old Blue, the first song in the Canine Trilogy. This is uh, Roger McGuinn singing this one, uh, Old Blue. So there's three dog songs sung by three different members of the band, Old Blue, it's a great song. Uh, Your Gentle Way of Loving Me, Child of the Universe, fantastic psychedelic song. Nashville West, instrumental bluegrass song. Drugstore track dri Truck Driving Man, uh, cool song, John Baez sang that at Woodstock. King After Three, Candy, which was a <clears throat> from a, a, a movie, I guess, called Candy. Uh, my, If I had to choose a favorite bird song, Bad Night at the Whiskey, which is a rock and roll song, and it's just great. This album's great because it has this psychedelic rock on it, but then it has this part to go to country music, too. Uh, so you can sort of see that on the back. They've got the, they're in the Spaceman outfits, and they're down there riding horses. So that's it. I wanted to mention to you that in addition to these albums, in the early 2000s, 2000, 2000 to 2002, uh, these Sanctuary albums came out. So these were albums that uh, featured, you know, outtakes, B-sides. So I would highly recommend all four of these. In fact, I would probably recommend all four of these over any of the studio albums except for Notorious Bird Brothers and uh, Dr. Birds and Mr. Hyde. These are fantastic. I love that album cover there. I just think that's a great cover. They just look like they're ready to rock and roll there, don't they? Mm. Uh, the main reason I bring this up though is because uh, Sanctuary 4. Uh, this has all of the uh, Graham Parsons vocals on it that got erased from uh, Sweetheart of the Rodeo album. So if you're a big uh, Graham Parsons fan, you might want to check that out. So that's it. That's my ranking. I uh, have no doubt that there are many people in the vinyl community who are more familiar with the birds than me and think my list is completely wrong. I would love to hear from them. What is your, what is your opinion? How would you rank them? Uh, or if you want to do another video response, uh, that would be very interesting. But uh, yeah, please comment below. Let me know uh, what you think about the birds, which albums you think are best. Um, and that's it. Um, I'm going to uh, close here with uh, one last clip from um, the birds. Uh, uh, from Dr. Birds and Mr. Hyde. And uh, that'll be it. So, uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>